The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Rude, Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com. Hey folks, Tim C. Smith here with this week's video fishing forecast, and it continues to be a real chore for any worthwhile fishing reports as winter refuses to loosen its grip despite the calendar. The bad news is I awoke to 28 degrees Wednesday and skim ice on the canal. The good news is that we could be pushing 70 degrees on Friday and Saturday thanks to an approaching warm front. We need a good dose of sunshine and temperatures like that to get the water temperatures up. Water temps in the low 40s in the ocean, sound, and bays has stole the fishing for flounder and blackfish. Open boat captains are also blaming the cold ocean temperatures on what has been a lackluster winter cod run. On the positive side, it doesn't take much to raise temps in the waters in the shallows and in our bays and harbors, which should make flounder and blackfish more active. When I said reports are sparse, I meant it for where winter flounder is concerned. Here's what we were able to dredge up. Ken at Tightline's Tackle in Sag Harbor knew of one flatty taken in the Shinnecock Canal on the weekend. John at J&J &J Tackle in Patchog had one customer with two flounder in the Fire Island area on sandworms and mussel chum. Chasing Tails in Oakdale knew of a couple confirmed flounder from the Great South Bay, while Rich Miller and his wife managed a couple of flounder in Dickerson's Channel on opening day. Last week, we reported two flounder from the western Great South Bay. This past weekend, that same angler, Rich Figula, was at it again, but all he had to show for his efforts was this photo of the water temperature. Captain Brian and his Catfree Base Island Princess has been one of the very few boats targeting flounder since the season opened on April 1st. He said flatties have been pretty much non-existent, but Wednesday they boated their first flounder of the 2018 season. Joe Bocci was the lucky angler. Brian expects things to improve with the water weekend temps. He'll be targeting stripers beginning on Sunday, but may mix it up with bass and flounder depending on how the fishing develops. Up on the North Shore, the only flounder report came from Diane at Duffy's Bait and Tackle, where she weighed in a pair of flounders in the one pound class that came out of Oyster Bay. So if you're wondering about the bluefish and striper migration, look no further than the Fisherman's New Jersey report with Jim Hutchinson. Check out this video. This is what's heading north to Long Island. Blackfish reports were also lacking. Captain Tom of the Captain Allen Point Lookout has been picking away at some tog along with a few cod in 60 to 100 feet of water. We had reports of a couple small blackfish from around the west end bridges and also the rocks along the backside of Robert Moses. We had no reports from the North Shore. Striped bass should be a better option for this weekend. And for more on that, let's go to Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galifaro. Well, Tim, as you know, striped bass are less affected by the cold water temperatures, and that's been reflected in the improved action we are seeing as we move towards the season opener, which is this Sunday, April 15th. The season runs through December 15th with a 28-inch size limit and a one-fish bag. If you want to celebrate the opening, stop down at Cap Tree Bait and Tackle. Uh, anywhere between 10 and noon, they're going to be celebrating the third annual striped bass opening day celebration. Uh, they'll be the crew from ODM Rods on hand for demos. There's going to be some hot deals on those rods, as well as $5 packs of gulps and some great deals on SNS bucktails, and I believe they're also serving cake. Well, we've received some good reports of bass to 30 inches from typical early season locations like Little Neck Bay and City Island, uh, Hempstead Harbor, and Jamaica Bay is also starting to come to life with bass. Uh, some bass were also reported from the bays and harbors. Uh, on the North Shore and South Shore as well as the East End this past week. Some of this action is being fueled by winter overfish, but there are also signs of some schoolies moving along the ocean beaches and also into the Western Sound. Remember too, you do not have to wait until Sunday to target stripers. When the current marine regulations for stripers were established, the legislation allowed for anglers to target striped bass as a catch and release fishery during the closed season. Uh, that's been in effect for many years, but it seems many fishermen are still not aware of it. Uh, so you can target striped bass. It's the only species that I know of that you can legally target when they're out of season. And with temperatures near 70 degrees on Friday and Saturday, I expect there'll be more than a few folks out playing catch and release this weekend. Thank you, Fred. Looks like the stripers will get plenty of attention this weekend. A number of party boats will be targeting bass come Sunday. 
The most reliable action, however, comes from the freshwater side. Some ponds and lakes on the island have already received multiple stockings and fishing remains good in many of those waters. Unfortunately, the Belmont Lake F Family Fishing Festival was canceled last Saturday due to inclement weather, but that didn't stop the DEC and the state parks from dumping a few thousand trout in the lake, which made lots of anglers happy as well as cormorants and ospreys. And don't forget the Long Island Boat Show at the Nassau Coliseum is running Friday through Sunday. Tickets are 15 for adults, 12 for seniors, $5 for ages between 6 and 12. Parking is free. I'll say that again, parking is free. For more info, go to NewYorkBoatShows.com. For all you master anglers that know how to catch sea robins, the Fisherman's Dream Boat Contest has a category for you. That's right, sea robins. So this year, we'll all be looking differently at our winged friends. To be part of the action, you need to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube page, and be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat Contest and get the best local fishing info in print and on the web. Until next week, this is Tim C. Smith for the Fisherman.com. The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency.